Good morning and welcome to Love Every Moment, coming to you today from 1880 Town in South Dakota, where I'll be working for this summer season. Today's verse is 1 John 5.10. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. All right, it does say... Uh, has made God a liar, and let's get this straight. This should be understood, of course, but just to clear the air, God does not lie, he will not lie, and indeed because of his nature, he cannot lie, and there is nothing that any man can do to make God actually lie. All right, just to make sure that's out there. When it says that we make him a liar, it's talking optics. In other words, if we claim to be a Christian, but we have a testimony that uh, goes against that, it looks as if, well, God must be some liar because he says one thing, but his follower is doing another. It's only optics that we're talking about, not actually God somehow telling a lie. Now, back to the main verse. The one who believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. And there is an implication that he has the truth in himself because of the next phrase coming up. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar, so the opposite of truth, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. This whole thing is played out very well for us in one of my favorite chapters, John chapter 8, where Jesus really has a head-to-head -head against the Pharisees. And in verse 44, Jesus says to them, You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because, notice this, there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar, there's that one, and the father of lies, which implies that just as God cannot tell a lie, the devil cannot tell a truth. Now, that's strong enough, but what led up to this? To recap that, Jesus, excuse me, the Pharisees had said, well, we're sons of Abraham. And Jesus said, well, gee, if you were sons of Abraham, you wouldn't be trying to kill me. <laughs> and then the Pharisees really go below the belt. They say, well, we're not born of fornication like you were. We have one father, God. Boy, that really is. I mean, they're basically saying, you're mama, you know. All right. But then in verse 42, just the first part, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. That's the key. You would love me if you were a true follower of God. And if he were your father, it would come out in love. But they're not loving. Remember that you could tell a Christian, not by their politics, not by their signs and wonders and miracles, not by speaking in tongues or even giving tithes and stuff. You could tell a Christian by his love. And the fruits of the Spirit with love is the number one fruit. If these folks are claiming to be godly, and yet they're not loving, they're committing the sin of taking the Lord's name in vain. They're claiming to be, you know, of God when they're clearly not. And so, back to our main verse, that's the lie that they're not believing in the true testimony. Now, what is the testimony that uh, God has given? Maybe I should hold off on that because that's actually next week's verse, but I'll give you a sneak peek. Next week's verse will say, the testimony is this, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. But remember, it comes out in love. So let's choose to love every moment because then we're going to love every moment. I'm your average wretch, and I hope you have a great week. Thank you.